Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Print It here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to create Django forms from your Django models. Now I'll be using the to-do list app that I created in the last video for this one. So this is going to be a pretty short video, so I'm going to keep it simple. I'm making a Django course right now and I'll get into the details about this, but for this particular case, I'll keep it really simple. So the first thing I want to show you, which has nothing to do with creating forms from models is I messed up here. Someone in the comments told me, I think the name was X Extreme Hackers or something like that, told me that I shouldn't be using request.post text. I should be using instead form, clean data, and text. And the reason why you want this instead is because one, you're getting the data after the form has been validated, not the raw request data. And two, you only get the data if it has been validated. So I don't know why I did that last time. I think it was just a brain fart. I believe I was demonstrating that the request data was coming through for the post, but I just copy and pasted that over to this new to-do object and I forgot to change it to clean data. So if you're using forms in Django, you want to use clean data. You don't want to use the direct data from the post request. So now to get on to creating models from your forms, or forms from your models, I set that backwards. It's actually pretty easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new to-do form and I'll actually name it like new to-do form. Not a very creative name, but that's the one I'll be using. So I'll create a new class, new to-do form, and I'm going to inherit from model form instead of just plain form. So forms.model form instead of form. Here, I'm not going to put any regular attributes because this form is going to be built from an existing model. So instead, I'm going to create a meta class and the meta class just has meta information for the class that I'm actually interested in. And in this particular case, the meta information that I want first is the model. So by supplying this attribute in the meta, you're telling Django which model this form should be based off of. And I need to import from models, I'm going to import to do, which is the name of my to do model. So I'm going to tell it that the model is to do. And I'm also going to tell it the fields that I'm interested in. So in this particular case, I only care about the text field. I don't want the ID, which is here, but it is included in the model stop model. And I don't want complete because that is something that the user doesn't control. Just looking at the to do list app, you can't say it's complete from the form itself. You have to add it and then click one and that marks it as complete. So with that, these two things allowed me to create a form from a model. So you see it's a little simpler than the one up here. Uh, this particular case, it really doesn't save that much code because I'm only using one field here. But let's say I had 10 fields, then you would see the difference immediately. And I'll probably have a better example in my course, but for this one, it's just the one field that I'm interested in. So not much of a difference, but just know that if you had more fields, then it would be a big difference because really you're only appending to this list here. You don't have to add anything else unless you want to. And I'll actually show you that in a moment. So I'll go to my views and what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to use the new form that I created. So the first thing I'll do is on the index, I have the to do form. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a new to do form and it's going to be from the new to do form class, which I need to import from forms. And I'll just comment that one out and I'll change the value here from form to new to do form. So now when I save this and run it, this is now the new form that I have. But as we can see, it went to being ugly again. If you remember in the last video, the default input is pretty ugly, so I need to add the widget to make it have the same style as my app. So to do that, I'll go back to forms, and it's actually pretty simple. So I need to add a text input widget for the field text. So what you need to supply is a dictionary called widgets, so widgets with an S. And then inside this dictionary, you're going to have the keys match the fields that you want to add widgets for. So I want to add a widget for the text field. And then the value for the field will be the actual widget. So pretty much everything following the equal sign here. So I'll just copy and paste this. So um, let's see. 
if I can get over to the left. I have two monitors, so it's not. <laughs> I'll start from the right then. It wasn't cooperating. All right, so I'll copy this and then I'll paste that there. I think I have one extra parentheses. All right, so when I add this widget to the meta for the new to-do form, let's see if it appears correctly, and it does. So it looks just like the old form, and that's because I added the widget here, which adds the class and the placeholder and the ARIA label and ARIA described by that I have in my HTML. Okay, so now that I have that part working, now what I want to do is I'll go back to the views and I actually want to process this form. And we'll see in a moment that processing this form is a little different than what I have here. So what I'll do is I'll instantiate the new to-do form using to-do form. And once again, you pass in the post data and I'll comment this one out. And instead of saying if form is valid, I'll say if new to-do form is valid. And then here, this is where it's going to be radically different. So you see these two lines here? We actually don't need those anymore. So I'll just comment those out. And the reason I don't need them is because since the form is based off of a model, Django knows how to create a new object of that model. So basically it knows how to create a new row in the table that that form is associated with. So to do that, I can create something called new to do. So I'll just use the same name, but instead of instantiating to do here and passing in the data to text, all I have to do is say new to do form dot save. And what happens here is this is going to return a new model object. So new to do, and it's already saved to the database for me. So it's basically combining these two lines into one, but it's much shorter. So I'll save this and I'll run the app just to show you that it works. So here's a new to do add. And it failed because it's telling me to do form does not have the object. So the reason why it doesn't is because one simple mistake, I forgot the new to do form there. So I was using the old name, not the new name, but you see the original one doesn't have it. So if I try this again, then we'll see that it actually works. Okay. So we see that a new to do has been added. If I add yet another thing to do, at that, it gets added. So that's pretty simple. Well, a cool thing you can do with forms that are based off models is you can also update particular things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my database viewer over here and I'm going to look at the table for, let's see, I think I have the wrong table. So let me open this and oh, it looks like the right table. So I'm just looking for the to do app table, which I don't see in here. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it was, oh, I was looking at the indexes. That's why. <laughs> okay. So here I see all the to do's I have in my database. So I have nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So like I said, you can actually associate one of these with the form. So let's say I want to associate number 10 with the form. So 10 is, I really need to do this. So to do that, I would give the object for number 10, the primary key number 10. So to do that, I'll just say to do 10, we'll just call it. And then I need to query the database. So to do objects get, and then the PK is going to be 10. And what that is going to return is the to do object for the row number 10. I really need to do this. And then I'll pass that object to the new to do form using instance. So instance equals to do 10. And now what happens is the form is now connected to that one object only. So instead of creating a new to-do item, it's going to only modify this one. So let's see what that looks like. So note the second one here is I really need to do this and I'll put this in all caps. So here is a new to-do. So all caps, so it should be pretty easy to see. So if this works, what I should see here is this should change to here is a new to-do. And it does because it's modifying 
that one directly. It's no longer trying to add a new one because I am associating that object with it. And of course, I can do this as many times as I want. And it does it again. So we see that by associating the object with the new to do form, I can modify just that object directly. And the code down here stays the same. So this is really great for things like uh, a registration form where a user will fill out information about themselves and then submit it. And that will create the user in the database the first time around. But then they can edit that information. So say they change their email address, they want to change their password, then you can do something like this where you just associate the instance for that user with the form that is based off the user model. And then it's pretty easy to have an update for you automatically. So it saves a lot of time. There's not as much code to write. Of course, this can get a lot more complicated, but I just want to show you a very simple example because I think it's a cool feature. So really that's all I want to cover in this video. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.